Okay, so we're going to get started on the uh, examination of the form of risk again. Answer, ask all your standard questions. Obviously, you're going to focus on if it's you know acute traumatic injury or repetitive trauma, if there's any neuro, any signs of neuro problems, numbness, tingling, weakness, things like that. Uh, and again. As far as red flags, again, we're dealing with the whole upper extremity, so anytime that somebody's having, you know, radiating pain, we talked about it more specifically in the shoulder, that, you know, different organ problems can radiate to the different parts of the shoulder. Or, you know, if it's going down into the arm, you still need to keep that in the back of your mind. If you can't make sense of the history or something doesn't sound right, then, you know, always keep those things in the back of your mind. And, you know, if there's any occupational thing that they're doing repetitively that can affect, you know, if they're doing different things with the hand and wrist. And then again, as far as observation, you're looking for atrophy. Again, you can see here in the thenar area, the muscle is wasted. And then here's some of those nodes that we're talking about. These Haygarth's nodes, those are usually at the PIPs. And then Bouchard's are usually also at the PIP. It's usually from osteoarthritis. Heberden's are usually at the DIPs. And again, that's osteoarthritis as well. And then here, as we talked about, this uh, ganglion cyst, right? So they can have a swelling in there. Um, used to be that the treatment for that was to, like in my orthopedic teacher, they would say you take, because we used to use this book called Turek's Orthopedics. They got in the library here, it's about this thick. Right? So they'd say, okay, put your hand on there and you just pick up the book and smash it. So what basically that does is it's squeezing the, you know, it's dissipating the cyst, but a lot of times it comes back. You know, the really to treat those adequately, if it's a problem, they have to go in and, and do <coughs> surgery. And it ends up that, you know, there may be like extensions or little fingers of it that retreat in there. Um, that, you know, they have to do a pretty detailed surgery to get the darn thing out. And then a lot of times even still it will come back. So unless it's really a major problem, a lot of times you just leave them alone. And then here's a swan neck deformity. You see that with people with rheumatoid, whereas this, the, the PIP hyperextends, and then the DIP flexes like that. So you can see there's some upper extension at this joint here, and then flexion at the DIP. And so then these other different pathological things that you can know about the hands. And then the nails, a lot of times even different pathological processes or vitamin deficiencies will manifest in the nails. All right, so then now, there's our salami buddy again, right? We're going to go on to the physical exam. So, talk about range of motion of the wrist. So again, and then pronation and supination is in here, but that really doesn't apply to the wrist. That's, that's elbow. So flexion is 80 to 90, extension 70 up to 90. You have ulnar, ulnar deviation, radial deviation, and then again, pronation, supination is really part of the elbow. And then fingers, it's pretty rare that you can actually get in there and actually measure them with the goniometer. You're usually just going to compare one side to the other. But you get if you get into detailed stuff, if you're doing disability evaluations or AMA kind of stuff, then you may go ahead and measure all the actual finger ranges of motion. <coughs> all right, so we're doing goniometer the hand and wrist are going to do flexion. Typically, they're going to be sitting with their hand over the edge like this. Right. Now, usually you're going to measure it on the ulnar side. So I can just do it on my own hand. So where do you think the falcon is going to be? Yeah, radial stylo, that'd be a good landmark, right? Or actually the triquetum. So it's just distal to the radial stylus, <coughs> the ulnar stylus. Okay, and then which is going to be this one, the fixed arm or the mobile arm? That's okay, fixed. fixed arm. So you're aiming towards the left arm. Okay, and then 
you're just going to then like that. So you, you're using this part here for the reference, actually, not you're not watching the fingers. You're using the the fifth metacarpal. Okay. So I can't see from that side if I actually have it lined up. If you want to line this up here on the fifth med, and then line this up on the ulna. And then extension is just going to be the other way. So if you need to move this fulcrum up and down a little bit to be able to get this lined up here and get this lined up here, that's all right. I mean, it's not so critical of <coughs> the fulcrum. It's critical that you are able to accurately get along the fifth med. And then you have radial molar deviation. Again, you're going to probably have it over the edge of a desk, except instead of being this way, you're going to be like this. So then the fulcrum is going to be the mid part of the dorsal surface of the wrist. And then the fixed arm is going to be along the long axis of the forearm. And then again, you can. Uh, can aim for the either lecranon or lateral epicondyle here. And then this is going to be the midline again on the fifth, I mean the middle metacarpal. And then, I mean I'm using my finger to hold this, normally you do it differently. Than, so basically like that. All right. Pretty straightforward. And then again on the fingers, you're just comparing one side to the other. And usually you're paying attention more to the flexion extension, but again, you know, you have uh, all the abduction, adduction. But again, now this is your reference point, midline here. So these fingers moving towards the center are what? Abduction, and this is abduction. Okay, and then this one can do either abduction or adduction. And then what's this? Midline yeah, plus. Okay, so then you have your same stuff, standard five-minute neuro things, right? Okay, so at this point, you got to remember that you need to know all the dermatomes, myotomes, reflexes, upper extremity, and then half in this, for the second half of the class, then it's going to be all the lower extremity. I have a question about five-minute neuro for the return. Okay. Um, we don't do any cranial nerve thing, but just, just from here, because we did the five-minute including cranial yeah. nerve. We're not going to do cranial nerves. So again, just when you do, if, if you're doing, if you have a case that dictates whether, if you're going to do the part, any neuro exam, then you would do it. But even if you don't, we're still going to ask you to do part of it. And the main things are going to be either, we might ask you, okay, do the, show me the reflexes of the upper extremity. Show me the dermatomes of the upper extremity. Show me the monotones. So you just need to practice it so that you can just work through it.